Dodgers went 5-1 on the road, they extended their lead in the West, and the longest home stretch of the season's coming up. So good! Hey guys, welcome to Lad Talk. We're back with another episode. Mason, pretty good road stretch. Uh, yeah. Especially because it gets the West, the Mets of the West, the Madres tanked like we knew they would. A sopa for a sweep, but three out of four is the next best thing. And they, they just go to Arizona and just pummel the diamond back. So that was good. That was good. And if not for a rough eighth inning in that second game, yep. would have been a sweep of the Padres. Still was a great series, great yep. road series for the Dodgers. And they've extended their lead in the West. We'll get into that coming up. It's good that they put more length between them and the Padres, and then thus. Diamondbacks who have lost eight in a row now. That sucks. And now we're six games up on the second place Giants. So extending their lead in the West a yes. little bit. Like you said, the D-backs have lost eight in a row. We Lots. knew they couldn't go the whole season without going through a losing stretch. Yeah. That's just baseball. Yeah. And they're in the middle of it right now. Yeah, and it's the worst time to do it because the Dodgers are having their best stretch of the season. So that just puts you know so much more pressure on top of it. But... Um, they're a young team. They're not made to last 162 games. They're made to last about maybe 100, maybe 120. So those last, those 40 games here and there are really going to make or break it. And so far, they're tanking. Let's get right into it, Mason. The Dodgers, we covered Friday's game in the last podcast. Yep. And so going into that second game, you had Michael Grove getting the opener start. Yeah, just one inning. Just huh? one inning. Uh, went one and a third, um, allowed one hit, uh, no runs, struck out four. He did so, really well, all four yeah. outs, yeah. All four outs for strikeouts. Then they went to the new guy, Ryan Yarbrough, out of the pen. Oh, he looks so good. He looks so good, just kept him off balance. He doesn't have 100 mile an hour stuff, but his stuff plays. Spotting up very well. Yeah. Then they went to Gratterall. Maybe he went to Gratterall a little too soon there. Yeah, I think Yarbrough was just on a roll. Um, I think he should have at least started the next inning. Uh, just to see where he was going to go with it because I think the Padres were just really excited not to see Yarbrough on the mound because they were doing nothing against him. It was kind of like us versus the Rays in Game 6 of the World Series in 2020. Uh, we were just happy to see Snell not on the mound, and then we just won the game. So that's kind of how it was for San Diego in that one. Got to keep the starter that's shutting him down on the field as long as possible. Then it went to Almonte in the 8th, and that's where things went south. Yep. Um, allowing three runs on just one hit, only recording one out. I mean, you're at a point in the season where you don't want to use your big arms and get them too tired before yep. the, the playoff stretch and the postseason. So going to Almonte there, trying to save some of the other arms, but he's not the guy for the eighth. He's not. Definitely not for the eighth. Um, I would say he's a guy to come in at the fifth if your starter's having a bad time. But at the same time, I agree with what you're saying. You can't just use your best guys every single time, but Almonte just doesn't have anything going for him this season, really. He'll have four or five bad outings and then have a great one. And then have another three, four bad ones and have a great one. So he's not as consistent as you need him to be, as you need a guy in the bullpen to be for the Dodgers. But him, Vesia, when I see them coming out of the bullpen, I think, here we go. Weakest links. Who knows what's going to happen. Weakest links. Yeah. Then Ferguson coming in, four runs scoring against him. Uh, you had an error made by Ferguson there on the, had the guy picked off and yeah. just overthrew it. You know, just things just went south. The offense looked okay in this one, yep. uh, considering they were going up against Blake Snell, the lowest ERA in baseball. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? But he plays for the terrible Padres, so you don't really talk about it. That's right. Betts went two for four in this one. Will Smith hitting a home run in this one in that first inning off of Snell. Starting to wake up a little bit. Starting to wake up. There's, it's funny because Snell usually shuts us down. There's a couple guys in the lineup that will, you know, tag him for a home run here and there. Seven unanswered runs in the eighth inning for the Padres, and yeah. Dodgers ended up dropping this one eight to three. It's pretty embarrassing. I um, mean, you have a two run lead, and then you give up an astronomical amount in that one inning, and you just, you know, just let them kick you around. It sucks, but you know what? It's one of those games where you just got to move on from it, and they did. They won the next two in really good fashion. Take three out of four to win the series. So. We saw Lance Lynn be the pitcher that we're going to need him to be yes. down the stretch in yes. game three on Sunday. He went six innings, allowed just one run on four hits. And that's honestly a um, short start for him because he's usually going to go seven 
no less than seven innings for you. So for him to, he really had to battle kind of in the middle. So for him to be able to get six, it was really good. Lance a lot. Lance, a lot. Lance throws a lot. Lance, Lance a lot. throws a lot. Lance a lot. Um, you had a few home runs for the Dodgers in this one. Ahmed Rosario with a home run in that first inning off of Rich Hill. Very good. Dick Mountain kind of set the tone. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Freddie Freeman in the second inning, he hit one off the hill as well. Oh, and yeah. And then Mookie taking Avila deep in the eighth to kind of put the cherry on top of this Sunday. Yeah, great bats, but you know what? I want to go back really quick to that Freddie home run. It was like an eight or eight to ten pitch at bat. He was fouling off some tough pitches and just clobbered that off speed pitch inside. He turned on that. Frederick? As soon as he hit it, Frederick, it was just absolutely gone. It's great. So good. Dodgers scoring eight runs in this one to answer the Padres' eight in the previous game. Yep. And this one did not come down to the eighth inning. Um, the Padres yep. had no offense in this one against Lance Lynn. Two very good starts for the Dodgers thus yes. far, and we're excited about that. Bullpen was good. Then I will on say Monday, this. Go ahead. Sorry, I, mean, I will say this. Say it. Better than Cinder. That's right. Good pick. <laughs> Anything he was. So, you know what? I'm happy just to uh, trade him away, get a couple pitches that you're actually going to use and can count on. Good to, Not good to, to mention Rosario was pulling his weight. That's, I, I completely agree. It was it just a great, was it a one for one? One for one. Wow. Straight up. That was really, really good of the Dodgers on that. Going on to Monday's game. This one, a little more excitement. Um, yes. The, Padres getting ahead early, five to nothing in the third. You go on to the top of the fourth, and the Dodgers answer with eight runs of their own. That's insane. It goes to show why the Dodgers are the best team. It's because of the best team in baseball with two outs. Who's your daddy? The Dodgers. Who's your daddy? Daddy Dodger. Not the Madres. No, they're no. your mothers. No, they're everybody's grandbaby. They're just terrible. They're the kids that get in trouble <laughs> at school, and they just, just yeah, get kicked around. The Dodgers with a couple of home runs in this one. Mookie yeah. Betts hitting his 31st home run of the year in the fourth off of Seth Lugo. Uh, no, that was a grand salami. Was it wasn't just a home run. It was a grand slam, man. He is on fire. If I mean, if Acuna, it's it's down to Acuna, Freddie, and Mookie for the MVP race. Of course, it seems like Acuna's just going to walk away with it because he's just having and, and the guy is unbelievable. He's unbelievable. But at the same time, at the same time, the next two guys are playing for the Dodgers, which is awesome to see. So, heck of a one-two punch. It, it really is. It's, I think it's the best one-two in baseball. You, you can argue. Name a better one. I Do it in the comments. I, I wouldn't even say argue because you can't argue anybody any one-two that are better. Um, Acuna is obviously having an MVP season, but he's just one guy. We got two, which are phenomenal. I mean, think about it. Who in our lineup are MVPs? Freddie, Mookie. That's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Freddie, two for four in this one. Mookie with that grand slam. That was a big one. Uh, Seth Lugo was complaining about some sign stealing there. It's legal if it's on the field. Yeah, anything between the lines is legal. You know, if it's between the lines, it goes as long as you're not using uh, technology to steal and bang any trash cans and wear wires. You're good. You're good. You're good. Even Bob Melvin, the manager of the Padres, was like, everybody does it. It's baseball. Yep. They've done it since the beginning of time. Yep. You got to get an edge. Baseball's hard, man. Baseball's really hard. Baseball's hard. You got to get an edge on the next team. Um, I will say this. The Dodgers are high at a franchise record for the most grand slams in a season. I think they have the most out of any team this season, too. That's correct. 11. That's really good. Pretty good. It's pretty, Altman has pretty two. grand. Altman has two of them. Which is kind of crazy. As a, as a Freddie has two as well. It's a good team. Great. Good offense. Will Smith went two for five in this one. Kike hit a home run. Kike's the man. He's just... They were saying that apparently he was getting, you know, more of a hot streak before he left Boston. But even if that's the case or not, he has just been phenomenal since he came to the Dodgers. He's driving the ball. He's not popping it up. He's not hitting little grounders. He is squaring up the baseball and getting a lot of extra bases right now. It's good to see. We need it. Very good to see. Kike, Mr. Clutch. Uh, James Outman with a heck of a game. He went 4-4 oh. in this one. He's starting to heat up. OPS really almost up to 800 at 799. Good for him, man. I mean, of course he went consistency, and he had a rough you know, two months there. But the player he is now is the player that we saw at the beginning of the season and spring training. 
I'm telling you, if he didn't have that two month slump and he was just more of a consistent player, he could have been in the running for rookie of the year. Yeah. Corbin Carroll, of course, having an amazing season. He's going on, he's in a down slump right now, but consistently, he's been the best rookie, I think, this year. Uh, Tony Gonsolin, another rough outing for him. Yeah. Uh, kind of got let off the hook by his offense in this one. Yeah, he's he got to get it figured out. He does. Um, we're going to need him uh, down the stretch, especially in the postseason. I mean, is he going to be the uh, guy going game one? No. Is he going game two, game three? Probably not. But we're going to need him in that fourth or fifth game to be able to make it all the way. Absolutely. I mean, he's one of your guys. Yeah. And then going on to Tuesday, the Dodgers headed to Arizona to play the D-backs. Um, the first game, Julio, what a, what a start. What a great start. He's finally looking like Julio of old since the All-Star break. I think, I think except for like one start. He has been just lights out. Really, really solid. Now, has he been perfect? No, but he has been who we need in these moments. So it's good to see. Who we need? Julio. Who we need? Julio. Julio went six in this one, allowed four hits, no runs. He struck out five. Moving on to the bullpen, they brought in Brazier to relieve Julio, and then on to Bessia in the eighth, and another guy who does not need to be pitching the eighth inning. Ugh. Made this game way too close. I mean, and you you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but Vesia and Almonte are not attacking hitters like they should. Especially when you have a five-run lead going into the eighth or whatever it is. At this, Yeah, it was a five-run lead going into the eighth. Attack. It's okay to give up a base hit. I would rather give up a base hit than give up two walks or even just one walk. Attack hitters, make them earn it. Because the minute that you walk somebody and then a hit, you got to run around first and third or second and third with no outs. Make them earn it before you give up a free base. No walks at all. But if you're going to give up a walk, don't let it be the leadoff guy. Attack, attack, attack the hitters. And these guys are not doing that. And I think that's the difference. I mean, you can get into exactly what's wrong, but that's the biggest thing I've noticed between pitchers that are that are producing the season compared to the last three, four, five seasons. They have been nearly perfect. They're not attacking hitters. Go right after them. Got to get ahead. Go right after them. I mean, especially if you have a four or five run lead. Hell, even if you have a two or three run lead, attack the hitters, get the outs. Trade up one run, four, three outs. I'm okay with that. So the Dodgers um, scoring in the second inning. Mookie drove in two in this one. Freddie was three for five, red hot at the plate. Of course he was. Of course he was. Then scoring three in the fifth, and then the scary eighth inning. The D-backs added two. Um, Could have gotten away from him there. Um, added an insurance run in the ninth. Needed that. Needed that Needed big that. time. And then Evan Phillips allowing two runs, but able to close it out. Dodgers winning this one five to four. Peralta had a amazing robbery catch because that's true. I mean it meant so much more now, but of course at that time because it kept the game, it kept them at zero. But if he doesn't catch that, they tie it up in the eighth inning or, or the ninth inning, and potentially would have lost that game just because the momentum would have shifted. Peralta shown out against his old team. That's what he does. He also stole the show in game two of the yep. series yep. Yep. with that eighth inning RBI hit. That was a hell of a pitching match. I mean, it went back and forth, back and forth. I thought, who, why can't we hit Merrill Kelly? What's going on here? He, he's having a great season. He is having a really good season. I mean, he pitched for Team USA. I forgot about that, and they mentioned that during the broadcast. And I thought, oh, yeah, he didn't do very well. But he is just pitching his ass off since, so. Good for him. Uh, sucks to see him kind of get out of the game because he got injured. But you know what? The Dodgers, that's what the Dodgers do best, man. If they can get the starter off the mound if he's having a day, as soon as they get him off the mound, we're going to get some runs. We're going to get some hits at least. And so they do a really good job with that. Wear him down. And Bobby Miller did not budge an inch. A great no. start there. He had that one inning where the first two guys get on, he works out of it. It was second and third, no outs, and I thought, okay, he's gonna give up at least one run, let's limit the damage. And then he gets like three straight outs. It was one Line out, little. strike out, strike out. Awesome. Awesome inning. Showed a lot of poise there for a young pitcher. Yes. And Dodgers picking up the quick two game series sweep. That's good. We needed it. Um, it's good to go, you know, five and one against any two teams, but it means more than it's against the Diamondbacks and then San Diego because their fans are so um, cocky. But 
for no reason. So it doesn't make sense to me. So it was good to see that we can show them who their daddy is. And of course it's the Dodgers. Sorry, go to your room. Who's your daddy? You're in trouble. Who's the daddy? You're grounded. <laughs> no playoffs for you. <laughs> <laughs> who are we playing next? It's gonna be the Colorado Rockies. Ooh. Four game set coming up. The longest home series for the Dodgers of the season. It's gonna be 10 games at home. Ten. They're good at home. They're oh. good at home. This team is good at home. The first game, the Dodgers have not announced their starter, but it's likely going to be Clayton Kershaw from what I hear. Oh, yeah. Thursday, which is... Is it Kershaw Day? Uh, I think so. Is it Kershaw Day? I hope so. We're going to find out. But yeah, they did say was, um, he was activated and more than likely going to pitch Thursday, which is today, so I really hope it is. That would be good. Hey, Goosebumps. Today o'clock. Today o'clock. It'll be Ty Block. Today o'clock. Going for the Rockies. <laughs> He's time? one and one with a four eight five ERA. This game starts at seven ten Los Angeles time. Of it is. Um, as far as matchups are concerned, Kike's seen him the most, uh, right behind Chris Taylor. Chris Taylor's hitting three oh eight with a home run against him. Pretty good. Kike's hitting two thirty eight and twenty one at bats with a homer. That was good. Not quite as good. It's okay. Going in Friday's game, it'll be Lancelot Lynn. He's eight and nine with a six one one ERA. He has, but it's going down. Increased his wins to eight and decreased his ERA down to almost under six now. So I don't know what it is. Huge. People love coming to LA and playing for the Dodgers. Again, don't know why Rodriguez didn't want to. That's for all you haters. It is what it is. Good luck not playing in the playoffs. Loser. Loser. I mean, if you want to play for a sub 500 team, by all means, go for it. Enjoy it. Uh, we'll uh, be busy in October, so don't bother us. Austin Gomber, nine and eight on the year with the five four ERA. He's Gomber. going for the Rockies. Gomber, 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 he she Gomber, he she we Gomber, Wombo, Wombo, <laughs> Gombo, Gumbo, Gumbo. I think that was pretty damn hungry. Yeah. Shrimp, crab, catfish. Calamari. <laughs> that's Dude, not in the gumbo. No, that's not in gumbo. It's not in gumbo. What kind of gumbo are you eating? I'm sorry. Have you ever had gumbo? Sausage? Uh, no, I've had like crab in a bag. Crab in a bag? What is that? You've, had a, you've had a crab inside of a bag? No, it's the name of a restaurant, dummy. It's the... It's... What is that? It's like boiling crab. What's that? God, <laughs> you uncultured swine. No, it's where you get a bag full of seafood and you put what you want in it. You can get sausage, you get corn, you get uh, crab, you get shrimp, like, and they gumbo put it into a bag. I guess, I don't know. They put it, why is it in a bag? So, it's, I don't know, so it stays hot? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Not like a plastic bag? You, yeah, yeah, it's a plastic bag. It doesn't melt? No, it's not a grocery bag, dummy. What? You've never had or heard of crab in a bag no. or boiling crab no. or oh my god. I like my crab on a plate. Not in a bag. <laughs> Don't pay attention to Mac. So that second game starts at 710 as well, going on to <laughs> Saturday. It'll be the Catman Tony Gonsolin. Hopefully he can turn uh, it around. Yes, we need him again. We'll say it again. I've said it before, I'll say it again. We need him to step up and be the Tony that we need. He's got a 7 4 record, which is nice. His ERA is climbing up, and it's almost 4.5, which is not good. But we need him to be able to go more than four innings in a ball game. Yeah. He's pitching way, again, he's not attacking guys. He's trying to get too many swing and miss. But at the same time, you have to attack early for them to swing and miss. You can't just expect them to, you know, chase. You have to pitch ahead, work the count, so that it's in your favor all the time. Come on, Tiger Tony. I need you. Tony the Tiger. I need you. The Dodgers are going up against Peter Lambert of the Rockies. He's two and three with a five-five-seven ERA. Really seen him. Looks like Muncy has seen him the most. Nine at bat, batting four forty-four with a home run. So that's that's good news. It's fun. Yeah, that's a good thing. It's fun at bat. Uh, looks like Taylor's seen him. What? Taylor's seen all these Rockies. Uh, he's seen him six times. He's betting 500, so those are good odds. <laughs> those are pretty good. So, yeah, should be a good game. Hopefully, Tony can uh, show up and uh, I think have a good outing. And show out. Show, show up. Show up. Show up. Yeah, that'll be good. 
And then moving on to Sunday's game, the final game of this four-game set. It'll be a 110 start, an early Sunday game. Yeah. Bring, yeah. bring your sunblock. Yeah. Can't bring an umbrella. They don't let you bring umbrellas in the ball game. Really? No, you can't bring umbrellas to Dodger Stadium. Can't tailgate, no umbrellas. Can't drink after the seventh inning. Might be eighth inning now. Unless you go to center field. Yeah, I think it's left field. Might be in center field now. Left center. Left center, yeah. Yeah, but now actually left they, of center. they pushed it to the eighth inning because the game's, left. Was, game, the game's are so short, they pushed it to the eighth inning. So now you can buy alcohol until the end of, or mid-eighth. So after the top of the eighth, you can't buy any alcohol. That, I mean, that doesn't even, why? What, what, I don't know. Julio getting the start in this game, Sunday's game. He's 9-6 and six now with a 4-3-9. He's been looking really good lately. He'll yeah. be going up against Chris Flexen Wexen. 80 yard rating is one in five. We have favorable odds, so hopefully we can actually play on those odds. And I hope for a sweep, man. I think anything less than three out of four is terrible. Win the games you're supposed to win. Yes. As far as matchups are concerned, you've got Peralta and seven at bats. He's in seven fourteen with a oh, run against Flex and Wexen. Oh my god. Um, Miguel Rojas one for three. Dodgers haven't seen him too much. Um, Rockies. You've got Ryan McMahon has had some success against Julio. Yep. 22 at bats, he's hitting 318. Um, Brendan Rogers has some success, and 17 at bats, he's hitting 353. So, but then you got Diaz, who's got 25 at bats against him, batting 160. So, hopefully, we can have a good out. I think he, I think that, yeah, like I said, the odds are in our favor, and I think he's gonna have a good day. Who do you need? Julio. Who do you know? Julio. <laughs> Who do you know? Julio. So, thank you for joining us on another edition of Lad Talk. As always, let's go Dodgers. Adios. Cool.